Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goodycan, Superintendent of Schools. The Needham Public Schools provides amazing opportunities for all of our students to participate in rich art, music, and theater programs that allow students to develop and grow their talents that they can share with one another and with the community. Of course, they're supported by pretty fabulous and outstanding teachers who are devoted to their students. Joining me today are a few of those folks who really provide these amazing opportunities for our young people in Needham. I'd like to welcome Sarah Grinna, a Pollard music teacher, Shireen Yadalapur, a Needham High School art teacher, Heather Tryon, one of our elementary music teachers at Broadmeadow, and I'd also especially like to welcome Leanne Sutton, our new Director of Fine and Performing Arts. Um, welcome to, uh, to all of you, but uh, welcome to Leanne, uh, who, who uh, took over the helm from David Neves after he retired uh, over the summer. Yeah. So tell us yeah. a little bit about your journey so far. You've, you, you've, been, uh, you've been in the saddle a few months. What's, what's that been like? <laughs> well, I have to say I'm really excited and happy to be part of the Needham Public Schools in this community. It's a really wonderful community with fabulous faculty who are super passionate about their role in children's lives. And I think the community is really a supporter of the arts programs and it's part of the reason why I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. Well, there's, and, and I think uh, this particular program, in the presence of, of some you know different uh, different levels of teachers here and even different programs, really uh, speaks to the, the complexity of uh, of your role and, and just trying to uh, understand where all the pieces and players fall. I know that will be an ongoing process. That's really, been the task the since the, the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And well, and by the way, I, I want to get to it before we, we finish uh, this morning. But I appreciate receiving. Um, the uh, the faculty newsletter that kind of mm -hmm. lets me I've been I've only received I think two or three so far yeah. but it's been a great way for me to to you know know um, you know some of the things that are going on uh, so thanks for that I, I thought we'd begin maybe at the elementary level um, if we could Heather just explaining what what in in our uh, fine and performing arts music what's the what's the overall goal at the elementary level and, and we'll kind of move through the system um, I feel like our department is definitely a spiral curriculum so we're starting them right off at the elementary level um, I think preparing them for what they're going to do in secondary music and art um, but the goal is towards every child the art and music program it's a you know a general program towards every child and um, letting them succeed in art and music and and fall in love with it we hope now we have um, I think in kindergarten, we have a little bit of music. Um, is it 30 minutes? It's not well, enough, so but it's something. Yeah, kindergartners actually know they have it once a week for 40 minutes. Now. Okay. Yes. That's great. And then first grade, second, third, and fourth, and fifth grade. So the music program at the elementary level is K through five, general music, once a week, 40 minutes. And the art program is first through fifth grade, once a week for 40 minutes, except fifth graders have 60 minutes of art. And then um, fourth and fifth graders are also a part of their school core elementary chorus. So they actually have music twice a week, I would say, fourth and fifth graders. Um, we also have our STEAM program at... Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. Yes. Yeah. Um, at first, second, and third grade. And we also have our um, instrumental program starting in third grade, so third, fourth, and fifth graders before or after school um, can be involved in learning how to play string instruments or band instruments. I mean, we have, there's, there's a, a full yeah. complement of different opportunities for kids <laughs> to kind of get into music and, and uh, participate. Um, I do want to talk about the STEAM program in a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I want to move up though through the, the middle school. So after this really rich experience um, in music and, and um, uh, art, at the elementary level, what happens at the middle school when you get to High Rock? Sure. So High Rock, um, they've got uh, chorus and band and strings as well, so they can sort of dive in a little bit deeper to um, those specific ensembles. Uh, chorus also involves at the High Rock level some general music, um, hand drumming, etc. Um, and uh, they've got art. They have art once a trimester, but what's unique at High Rock is that there's also an arts integration program. So our teacher at High Rock, Ms. Krantz, she actually co-teaches several lessons with the social studies, English, or science teachers, um, and they collaborate on 
a project. So most recently I was there, they had just completed in um, a dig, an archaeological, archaeological dig. And then Ms. Krantz was um, collaborating with the social studies teacher in teaching observational drawing and how do we then um, take the skills that we're learning in our art class mm -hmm. and use them in kind of a real world scenario. So everything you just described is just at High Rock. Just at High Rock, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have this this great programming and music and then an art and an integrated art program where the mm -hmm. art teacher is working with others. I think that's um, I think that's amazing. And I have actually seen some of the work, not with the archaeological dig. Yeah. This is when they're out in the backyard with the uh, uh, the wooden boxes and they're digging down to, to uh, uncover some ancient civilization, observe it, understand it, and report out on it. Wow. So what happens when you, when you move on to Pollard? What are the opportunities there? So Pollard uh, gets even more in-depth. Um, I see uh, seventh grade chorus classes uh, every other day um, for about an hour. Same with band and strings. Um, those students who do not choose uh, to do band, chorus, or orchestra in seventh grade uh, are into the arts rotation. So they get a taste of visual arts um, and music and a variety of other things throughout the three trimesters, one per each. Uh, in eighth grade, um, we see the students two out of three days for the ensembles uh, and for the um, arts rotation classes, which includes theater. Um, and they rotate six times a year through those arts rotation classes. Uh, after school, we have a variety of ensembles available to the students as well. Uh, we've got the High Rock Pollard uh, Select I'm Choir. I'm exhausted listening to all of <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the, how all I felt. The <laughs> I know. To make all, these all these different right? programs. Okay, yeah. keep going. The uh, High keep Rock Pollard Sarah. Wind Ensemble, the Jazz Band, uh, and the Town Orchestra. These are uh, select ensembles, audition only, open to 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Um, and it really helps to build a, a very strong culture to have all of these different ensembles running, um, to have not only strong curriculum during the day, but also uh, during those after school offerings as well. Um, then we have our theater department, right. led by the So that's lovely. kind of a new dimension that happens um, in the program beginning in the, um, at, at Pollard. Yes, yes. Uh, and again, sixth graders are welcome to audition for our plays and our musicals as well. Um, Ms. Jones, uh, Catherine Jones, heads up the theater department um, for the middle school, and she will direct uh, the musical this winter, which is Annie, um, and uh, a play, TBD, in the spring. Um, and that happens every year as well. Wow. I mean, it, it, the opportunities are, are, uh, are great, and, and I, we'll talk a little bit about this, but they clearly complement the, the entire child's education at the elementary level, at the middle school level, and I, I do want us to talk about that. Before we do, though, uh, Shireen, then, then our students move into Needham High School, and um, unlike some other high schools, there, there are some specific... Uh, fine and performing arts requirements. Yes. Uh, there are some other high schools that don't have that level of requirement, mm -hmm. but Needham High School really is committed to that. So what does generally the program look like at the high school? So at the high school, we are um, continuing in the tradition of that sort of rigorous, um, in-depth look at things, and then also having a wide variety of electives and um, opportunities that students can engage in the arts. But in addition, with our eight credits that students need in order to graduate, that's our fine and performing arts. Um, credit requirement that we have. We really see the arts as a core discipline at the high school level. And so for us, um, having our students be able to participate in either, you know, introductory level courses that they can then choose to move on to a higher level and, and get a little bit more in depth with it um, is always an option. And then of course they also have a wide variety of other electives that they can also choose. Um, to participate in, you know, things from, you know, a single course in, let's say, um, digital art and design to maybe taking a ceramics course and then maybe jumping into a photo photography course if they wanted to. And then also, of course, we have so many um, things that we do at the music level as well. We have a wide variety of musical opportunities at the high school, including, you know, band, um, jazz band, uh, uh, orchestra, guitar, we have guitar yeah. contemporary music ensemble. Yeah. Yeah. 
um, and then of course our theater department as well. There's a music production uh, studio as well, which not many people know about, where they're actually learning how to do songwriting and using computer software. Just the MIDI lab, yes. the M-I-D-I lab, yeah. uh, that's within the the, right. uh, um, you know, the chorus and, mm -hmm. and orchestra rooms. Yeah. Right. And what what are students doing there? So um, it's called Music Studio, and Music Studio One is about songwriting and how you use music notation software to actually compose music. And then in Music Studio Two, they do a lot of film scoring. Um, so how do you think about creating sound for um, pictures, essentially? You know, I, I, was, I was thinking about this, that uh, my own experience in previous high schools and talking to some of my colleagues, that uh, folks sometimes say, you know, how many of your students participate in athletics or fine and performing arts? And in Edom, I say, well, 100% of our students do, um, mm -hmm. one way or the other. Some are obviously more involved, and in, in different dimensions, they might be participating in art and music and in, in theater, perhaps, some just in, in arts and maybe just meeting their requirement. But really, uh, all of our students have, have an experience that really uh, uh, is important and, as you su suggest, is, is a core discipline um, for everything that, that we're doing. So I guess I, w one of the things I wanted to know is what are some of the um, key performances or key um, you know events that are that are coming up. I, I'm, I'm recognizing that in most of our classes, students when they are assessed, when they perform, it's usually one on one, um, sometimes with the group, but with their teacher in the classroom, and and then that's done. Music and fine and performing arts and theater is is different in that the the assessment in many ways, or some of the assessment, I want you to help me understand it, is, is actually very public. Mm -hmm. um, which I think is awesome, and I know that you all think a lot about that. What what does it mean to assess a student in the in the fine performing arts and theater? What are some of the things that you do? Some of those events and performances. Can I just jump in? I think the events and performances are great culminating events to all the work that's been happening, you know, since the beginning of the year. But I think the assessment that's happening within our classrooms is happening daily, like. Um, Shireen in her class, she's constantly walking around giving feedback to students, one-on-one -on -one feedback, and that's typical in all of our arts classes from elementary through high school. Mm -hmm. Same thing in an ensemble class. Like the feedback loop is insta instantaneous yeah. and continuous. Yeah. So I think that is something that's really unique in our classes, is that students are really being asked to think critically, refine, think critically, refine. Kind of really right on the spot. Yeah. I, I yeah. have seen that. I, I would happen to be happen to wander through Jonathan Vanderwood's class the other day, yeah. and, and everyone was paused uh, to for some folks um, in the orchestra to to mm -hmm. uh, get caught up mm -hmm. um, in, in, in what they were doing, and, and uh, I have seen that. Can um, I actually add one other thing to that as well? Is um, I think that as the teachers, we are doing that constant feedback. But what becomes so exciting for us is when we see the students start engaging in that feedback as well. Because for our students, I know, you know, that sort of dialogue that they're creating with each other and giving the feedback to each other is also extremely exciting and it really sort of helps create such a much more passionate environment because they're really engaged with what they're doing and that joy that they have in that rigor is really evident to us. Yeah. So that's just another really great thing that we love to see and have that happen. What, what are some of the, it seems to me that the performances, which kind of are a culminating public exhibition, yeah. really, of the regular daily assessments, they're going on all the time. I mean, I think, you know, Sarah and Heather, you're like, every other night, it seems, there's this other concert, <laughs> the fifth grade concert over at Elliott, or the town-wide concert over at, Bro we, we what 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 are the what are these experiences all about, and and how often, for example, at the elementary level, do these happen for 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 the community and for our kids? Um, well, speaking just like from my experience at the elementary level, um, I find it to be a very motivating factor for the students because um, they enjoy it. You know, they like the attention. <laughs> you know, <laughs> being up there, and um, so it's a it's a great motivation, I think, to keep them performing and wanting to be involved in the music. And they kind of go by season, isn't there? Is there generally a fall and a winter and a, and a spring concert? I would say mostly, yeah, you have two main concerts, like a winter and a spring for each of the group's ensembles. 
And, yeah. and how about at the middle school level? Um, are we it's about the same. Um, we have a couple of sort of additional events throughout um, the winter. Uh, there's a composition unit for the eighth graders um, that culminates in, in sort of a, a performance, if you will. Um, and uh, this year we're going to have a, a concert called Just the Guys that uh, includes um, the guys from elementary, middle, and high school levels. So wait, wait. What does this mean? Just their yeah. Interview. So, <laughs> so just, the just the guys. So um, there's a, sort of historically or traditionally a, a big um, a drop in enrollment um, in uh, in sort of the the guys half of the the especially chorus world okay. um, around maybe the voice changing years, um, okay. and so this is uh, I think was put in place years and years ago as. Um, sort of an inspirational event uh, and a, a community thing for um, to, to sort of inspire uh, more enrollment, more equal enrollment um, across genders in singing. So, so when it, when is this? When is just the guys? This, this is the this first I've heard March. of just the guys in March be? this year. It's okay. not a new event, but apparently, I, it yeah, happened in I, a couple it of years. happens on a, a, every like two to three okay, years. Okay, which makes sense. So yeah. that will be in March, and it will be elementary, middle, and high school. It uh, will, boys. yeah. Okay. So, um, and we're sort of in talks about some other exciting um, chorus events, maybe for the coming years. Maybe we do sort of a, a district wide. Thing. I don't know. We'll see. And this may <laughs> this may inspire some uh, some boys and some young men to, to keep up with the music Absolutely. and to participate. Yeah. yeah, and be an inspiration to the younger singers in the district to see some of the uh, the older kids performing. Yeah. You know, it reminds me thinking about uh, um, just the guys and and the performances that Heather was uh, describing that happen in the winter and the spring. That there are also at the high school uh, some a cappella groups that are yes. kind of. Uh, um, outside of the, I mean, they're part of the program, but they're really outside of the classroom. What, what do, the, what, what are the, the, what are the different groups? Well, <laughs> here we have Treble Rebels, Treble Rebels, from out of nowhere, uh, Subway Dwarves, and then there's a new one um, that just started, and I can't remember. Student run. Uh, and the, the thing with them is they're student clubs, so they're completely student run. Um, and that is actually the same for students acting to make a difference. That's a student club. Which is also a, a, a theater group that, that just uh, produced Grease recently. Which raised about, I think, $9,000 for um, uh, Strong Women, Strong Girls. Strong Women, Strong Girls, which uh, was pretty amazing that mm -hmm. a student run group raised $9,000 for this organization, yeah. which I believe provides mentors for other young women. Yes. Um, young women and mentors to girls, uh, yeah. which is pretty, pretty cool. And, and they did that along with these other student groups. I, I heard yeah. uh, from out of nowhere uh, at uh, Take, Back, um, Take Back the Night mm -hmm. um, uh, the mm -hmm. other evening. And uh, it, it's pretty amazing. I, I'll tell you, though, that's not accidental, and you, all of you, should take you know ownership and pride in that because you know working you know with you Heather at the elementary level and with your colleagues and and Shireen w w working these students getting involved in music and in art uh, has propelled them to really take the initiative and yeah. to do some things on their own um, that just doesn't happen in many other high schools if there is a music group it's led by a an adult mm -hmm. um, you know a typical orchestra or chorus and here there's that there's also students who are who are moving beyond that because yeah. of their experience with with all of you. On the, can I just jump in? I feel like there's also a lot of stuff happening on the visual art side. I was just going to yeah. say that. Yeah, we have um, a lot going on. The elementary teachers are putting together an exhibit at the public library in the children's section, so that'll be opening on November 29th. And also, um, right now, there's a group of art teachers at the high school. Shireen, Linda, I think Wendy, and. Um, Damon, right? Then, yeah. yeah, are working on the um, medicine wheel project, and you can probably. So, speak. what is the? I've I've heard about that in the in the newsletter. Yeah. What's the medicine wheel project? So, the Medi medicine wheel is a group that's based out of Boston. They're in the Boston Center for the Arts, and every year they do um, collaborative pro uh, projects and um, installation work throughout the city. This year, every year at this time, they in the tradition of the Day Without AIDS quilt, they always do sort of um, an installation piece where they try to gather a lot of, as many artists as they possibly can to be able to do individual works and then put them all up at the Cyclorama downtown, and then they do a 24-hour vigil. 
So we currently have about three or four classes right now that are um, participating in this, and so students have um, taken panels, and they, they're 24 by 24 inch each panels, and they have actually created an expression um, on, the, on the panel um, under the prompt of air, because this, theme's, uh, this year's theme is going to be air. So students have all worked, and so they're all going to be put up at the cyclorama, and there's going to be over 1,000 panels that are kind of coming together. So all these different artistic voices that are going to be talking now, when about. Is this, when is this occurring? Um, the vigil is going to be starting the Friday, or sorry, I think it's the Friday uh, after Thanksgiving. It's, yeah, November 30th. Yes. And then it, the exhibit's up for 24 hours, so it'll be essentially November 30th through December 1st. Okay. Yeah. Now, we're all, our students have an opportunity to go and Absolutely. participate in the vigil and, and see their work. And mm -hmm. that is the medicine, would say the... Medicine wheel. Medicine wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a, another way for students to exhibit their work as mm -hmm. they receive guidance and, and coaching, if you will, along the way. And I know yeah. at the middle school as well, students are having different art shows throughout the year. Throughout the year, Which yeah. culminates at the end, Needham High School. Mm -hmm. uh, has an art show that kind of takes over the building, right. uh, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you said this, I want to make sure I understand it. What, <coughs> describe what public art, installation art, uh, there's another term for it that escapes me right now, but it's when we're creating art in anywhere in the building that may, may complement that venue in the building or may not. What, what does that look like? So installation... Because there's art all over the Needham High School. Installation work is often... Um, it's often work that is created for a very specific space, and that can either be permanent or temporary. And for, um, for example, at the Medicine Wheel, this is going to be a temporary um, installation, so they're not always going to have it be up there. But we have in the past done other um, pieces of work collaboratively with our students, and they've sort of student run it, where they have done pieces that have been actually on display either at the high school or the public library um, or at the at the high school library for a longer period of time where they've had to take into the account the space that it's going to be displayed at, who's going to be walking through, who's going to be seeing it, what they're going to be trying to communicate to the people who are going to be in that public space, right, and then um, making work that's going to be engaging with the public as they go through that space. So you're really thinking about the audience. It's not just anything, yes. but it is something that may be, me may be meaningful to those with, who will be interacting with, uh, Absolutely. with the art. I wanted to, uh, Heather, have you um, share a little bit about the science, technology, engineering, arts, math, or STEAM um, program that we have mm -hmm. going on in the early elementary age. What's that mm -hmm. all about? It's a lot of, um, it's a lot of it's, disciplines to come it, together. Well, it is, and I think it's extremely innovative, and I feel like Needham should be put on the map. I, don't, I can't imagine that anybody else is doing what we're doing. It's very innovative. Um, but in first, second, and third grade, each um, class goes through a nine-week rotation. And so they spend nine weeks in science and engineering. They, then they will spend nine weeks in technology. And then they spend nine weeks um, in the music room and then nine weeks in the art room doing art space. But so there's the thread um, kind of flowing through all of them is um, a, there's a lot of group work teamwork um, and there's design going on and so the students are taught the design process of ask, imagine, plan, create, improve, and share. Um, so throughout all you know science, engineering, technology, and the arts they're, they are doing some sort of design the process. But then there's also science weaved through each of them. So in first grade the science theme is um, air and weather and so somehow they're doing that through the four you know rotations and then in second grade it's sound and in third grade it's um, earth and so like for example in second grade I know in the music room they're studying about sound waves and um, you know in different sounds and how they're created and um, and then they do this whole thing with emotion and sounds and you know create together as a group a little piece of of music and then in the science and engineering they're you know again talking about sound and sound waves and how sound is created and they build an instrument together um, I've seen the music yeah. I've seen them work on the uh, music instrument when they're doing that I mean it's a it's a 
it's an amazing opportunity, as you suggested, for mm -hmm. students to bring different disciplines, their, their creativity, uh, and, and, and these different uh, disciplines together. I wanted to, as we're, as, we're, as we're kind of concluding here, I have a lot more to talk about, but we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to uh, also note that at the end of the year, there are these other big public performances with uh, the art show that leads to students in the scholastic art uh, mm -hmm. writing and, and art program, yeah. the MICA uh, festival, um, music festivals that are happening. So beyond the community, there are these, uh, um, and, and Nita Martin Bloom, all these public uh, uh, performances, if you will, where students get to share their talents with others. Um, and uh, it's, it's amazing how it just, it just keeps going on and on. I, um, I wanted you, if you can, and, and maybe Leanne, you can just begin with this sure. to comment. There are some school systems that feel constrained with their budgets, and, and they, they feel that they have to focus on literacy and math and science, and at the expense sometimes of the arts. Um, some of you may know communities where, where mm -hmm. that's happened. Needham has really tried to purposely mm -hmm. avoid that, and in fact, as, as Heather described, increased our, our STEAM programming. Mm -hmm. um, if you had to explain the value of the arts to someone, um, to really, uh, to, what, what would you say? What, why does this complement the work we're doing with, with children? Right. I thought you might ask me that, and um, I brought you that, I, I brought something to actually read, because um, I think it, it's really eloquent. It's from the National Coalition um, for Core Art Standards, so they have put together our national standards for the arts. And they say, success and achievement in the arts demands engagement in the four fundamental creative practices of imagination, investigation, construction, and reflection in multiple contexts. These metacognitive activities nurture the effective work habits of curiosity, creativity and innovation, critical thinking and problem solving, communication and collaboration, each of which transfers to the many diverse aspects of learning and life in the 21st century. So I really think that, I mean, I could speak about it, but I just think that that's so eloquent. And the arts really are fundamental to being a human being. And I think a lot of the things, the initiatives that are happening within education around 21st century skills, social emotional learning, they're already happening in the arts classes. They're a Absolutely. core component Absolutely. to what we do. And um, I just think that we need to remember that as we're maybe balancing schedules and time and resources that a lot of the things, a lot of the goals that are already trying to be accomplished are happening already. In the, in the fine in the arts fine and performing arts. arts. And, you know, anything to add to that? I think that, I, I know I see that, Shereen. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think um, thinking about those 21st um, century learning skills, I think we have a unique position where we're actually able to authentically really designed curriculum that pushes those sort of skills for students and gives them the opportunity to really think about the communication, the collaboration, the critical thinking, the problem solving. Um, I think that it's very telling. I asked a group of seniors that were leaving our uh, program that went through it for four years last year. And one young woman who was actually studying engineering and math right now, um, actually said to me, I think the greatest thing that I can take away from being in the arts in the Needham Public Schools is that when I first started as a young student, I thought being smart was one dimensional. And now I've learned that actually being smart and being intelligent is really when you start to get pushed to be thinking um, with creativity and innovation. And I feel like this was the one area that I really felt pushed to kind of reach my potential in those particular you know, facets. So for me, I think that spoke volumes, that she really sort of saw that this was the place where she really kind of came into her own um, as an engineering and math student, feeling like this was the place that she really grew um, so much as a young person. Well, and I would say that I think that the programming at all levels brings students in. They come in with a level of excitement and uh, of an empowerment in, in, in learning throughout the day, knowing that they can participate in these amazing programs, whether it's in theater arts or music or, or in the arts. Uh, my takeaways from this conversation, we have a lot more to cover, but we're, we're running out of time, is uh, I, I, I love how Heather's described and, and Sarah, how we've, we've tried to integrate our arts program at different levels. 
Um, it's, it's something that goes K through 12. Um, we, we see arts as a core discipline in Needham. We don't see it as an add-on, and I think that's really important for the community to understand. Well, I look forward to uh, the different programs that will be coming up and exhibitions. There are many for the community to tune into, and I appreciate uh, you sharing uh, the Fine and Performing Arts program with the community today. Thank you very much. Thank you Thanks for having us. Thank you. <laughs>